GNOME Desktop and KDE Plasma are definitely the top two desktop environments used on Linux. But they both are extremely different from each other in every aspect and in this video we will be seeing how they both compare against each other in terms of visual aesthetics, looks and style, performance, customizability, stability and workflow. This is Linux Tech, and without further ado, let's do this. Talking about the looks and the style, both GNOME and KDE Plasma are just gorgeous to look at. GNOME has a top panel based design. The top panel has all the essential elements like basic controls, notifications and the calendar. The application menu is a full screen one with large icons and a search. Pressing the windows button invokes an overview with all the running windows. This does make switching easier, but I feel that this setup is somewhat distracting. GNOME is a modern desktop environment that is keeping up with technology. The animations and effects are generously incorporated which make the desktop look like a graceful dance. A large number of Linux apps are built for GNOME desktop, so the themes and the integrations work really well, making all the applications look so uniform. This is a huge plus point for GNOME desktop. KDE Plasma desktop on the other hand is built using the Qt framework. The desktop layout is rather traditional with a bottom panel. KDE has a very polished look with slick animations and a clean desktop. The animations are very different from what we see in other desktops. The themes are really good with a very high level of detailing work done on them. All in all, KDE Plasma is a gorgeous desktop environment as far as looks are concerned and it has this touch of superiority to it. Both KDE Plasma and known desktop look very different from each other but they look gorgeous in their own way. So they both get a point each for visual aesthetics. Next, we'll be having a look at the performance of the two desktop environments. KDE Plasma and GNOME are feature-rich desktop environments. They both are very modern and are evolving continuously. Now any software developing that fast will have a higher resource usage in every new version. That is true for GNOME Desktop. GNOME has been getting heavier in terms of resource usage with every iteration. And with the general availability of faster, stronger hardware, this is just fine. I mean GNOME is looking better than ever with some amazing features being added to it. But things are very different with KDE Plasma. KDE has all the shiny glittery stuff that GNOME desktop has and it too is made for today's hardware. KDE is in no sense a desktop made for older hardware, but still its resource usage has gone down significantly in the recent years. KDE is so light that it matches MATE and XFCE in terms of RAM usage. But if you look at the desktop, in no way shape or form does KDE feel like a super lightweight desktop. This right here is efficiency. On my PC, the idle RAM usage of KDE Plasma is just north of 500 MBs, while GNOME Desktop is around a GB. That's double the RAM usage. So in the performance round, KDE Plasma takes the point home. But I would like to let you know that less RAM usage doesn't mean a faster performance. In fact, both GNOME Desktop and KDE are very similar in terms of responsiveness and speed. GNOME Desktop is very, very customizable. There are a ton of extensions available online which you can install with a single click irrespective of the distro you are using. These extensions bring about some of the amazing features not available on GNOME by default. Some of the extensions change the very look and working of GNOME Desktop. GNOME allows a very high degree of customization. These extensions are created with professional grade standards and give a solid productivity boost. Then there's the GNOME Tweak tool. GNOME Tweak Tool is one step shop from where you can modify pretty much every aspect of the GNOME desktop. Themes, icons, fonts, the shell, extension, everything can be tweaked from here. I love this Tweak Tool because it allows you to give a very personal touch to your desktop. KDE Plasma also allows you to customize your desktop extensively. There are a number of widgets and themes. You can play around with color schemes, different animation styles and more, but the KDE Plasma desktop structure cannot be altered very much. A number of add-ons and widgets are available for KDE which make a lot of things really easier and faster. The widgets are really cool. They deeply integrate with the system and greatly enhance the functionality. Both KDE Plasma and GNOME desktop get a point each for customizability. KDE Plasma and GNOME desktop have very different workflows. KDE is simple and straightforward. The desktop promotes a faster, focused productivity. Launching apps is fast, switching between apps is fast. The apps are category-wise organized in the menu and there's a fast search. Well, if you want to get a lot of work done and that's your prime aim, KDE hands down is your best choice. 
GNOME Desktop has a very peculiar but intuitive workflow. There is no application switcher. You use the activities overlay for switching between the apps in case you are not using Alt plus Tab. The activities overlay also has a search box for applications. To browse the installed app, you click on this little icon. Now the application menu is optimized for tablets and touch screens. I mean, do you really need such big icons for a desktop PC? Many people have disliked the workflow on the GNOME desktop. But with a week of usage, GNOME desktop actually becomes very productivity friendly. You can switch between apps fast with the Windows or the Super button. You can launch new apps with the same button. It just takes some getting used to. To sum up, KDE and GNOME workflows are radically different. Anyway, the workflow point goes to KDE. GNOME and KDE Plasma have a set of applications written specifically for them so that they boost the overall functionality of the desktop. GNOME has Nautilus File Manager while KDE has Dolphin. GNOME has Gedit File Editor while KDE has Kate. Both of these desktops have very well written, polished and superior apps. I want to focus particularly on the software stores. GNOME software is an organized software portal that has an organized structure and a clean interface. It integrates nicely with a wide range of distros using many different package managers. But I personally have felt that GNOME software is rather slow and it really needs some optimization work on the backend. KDE's Discover on the other hand is fast and feels really good to use. But I wish it was more organized and less focus was given to KDE desktop apps in the store. KDE and GNOME have really good high quality applications that integrate beautifully with the desktops and offer a boosted functionality, a point each for both the desktops. Finally, talking about my personal choice. Logically, KDE makes a lot of sense. It is highly productivity oriented with a basic design that adheres to the principles of a good UI design. It is very low resource intensive and is really good on the i2. But I just love the GNOME desktop. I know it has its flaws, but the heart wants what it wants. I've grown very used to hitting the super button and switching applications from the activities overlay. And GNOME is really polished. It makes the computer look so good. Fine detailing work, smooth effects, well you can just sit in front of your computer and appreciate the beauty. My personal point goes to GNOME desktop, but by the total tally of points, KDE Plasma wins by a very small margin. Well that's it for today. If you like this video, do consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be putting out a lot more Linux videos in the coming days. This is Linux Tech signing out.